Hello, this is Anna, and we're going to continue talking about histology, working on um, part six, and we're going to focus in on the dense connective tissue propers. So let's start looking at some pictures. All right, before we get too far along, let's remember that we're dealing with connective tissue proper. Key thing here is the ground substance is going to be that liquid environment, okay? which means things can move through it easily, except with the dense, when we're dealing with dense, we have high numbers of fibers. So it's actually difficult for things to get past the fibers because there's so much in there, okay? So with our dense connective tissue propers, we don't focus so much on the ground substance for function, we focus on how the fibers are going to determine function. Okay, so let's zoom in on this picture again. So with dense regular, we're focusing on the regular. That means regular direction, one direction. So the major feature of dense regular is that the collagen fibers are going in one direction, which means functionally, because collagen resists tension, and that means it's gonna resist tension in one direction. So what I'm putting the blue boxes down, that's what you need to write down as a function, and it needs to be both part parts. Resist tension in one direction, all right? Where do you find it? Fast answers are tendons and ligaments. So let's look at this. So if we're looking at the photomicrograph, we see this pink staining lines, and we see that these pink staining lines all go in one direction. So those are those collagen fibers. Now I'm gonna use a blue pen to show where we have ground substance, okay? So this is gonna be the space in between the collagen fibers. And you can see that there is not much of it, okay? Now it's really hard to find nuclei, but here's some right down here and right down there. And it looks like there's one right there and one right there. But you can see that there's not, uh, not nuclei, cells. There's not a lot of cells. So we'll put cells in green. And, and most of those cells, if they are there, are going to be primarily fibroblasts. All right? All right, let's look at the next slide. All right, on this slide, we are looking at dense irregular, which means the fibers are multi directional. So in terms of the function, what I need you to put is resist tension. Whoops, I need to make this a little bit smaller. Resist tension in multiple directions. Multiple directions. Resist tension in multiple directions. Places where you find it, well the skin dermis is one of the easy ones to remember. Fibrous joint capsules. And let's not focus too much on some of these other areas. It gets confusing. Whenever you see people using the words, um, not, not that, in common English and they will say fibrous CT, it could be dense regular or it could be dense irregular. Okay. Now if we look at the fibers, we've got really high magnification over here and what we're trying to show is that the fibers are not straight. So, fibers are not straight, fibers are going in multiple directions. Now most of the time we are not looking at something at this magnification, we are looking at something like this, or maybe up a little bit closer. This, is, this over here is about 40x, so we could look at it closer. But it's still not gonna look like, the, like this particular picture here, okay? Now, I'm gonna zoom in on the dermis, okay? So this is the dermis of the skin. This is the epidermis. So this is stratified squamous. And you will remember we were talking about, in fact, we can just draw a line. Now I want you to see if you can figure out how I am drawing this line, which is a boundary between the areolar CTP and the dense irregular. What are you seeing? What do you notice? All 
right? What I notice is I've got these, and because of the stain, they're staining a black rather than a pink, but this, these, these lines that I'm drawing, these are my collagen fibers, and you can see they're going in different directions, all right, all over the place. Now, over here, up in the reeler, I have collagen fibers as well, and if I look really closely, I can also see that they're going in different directions, okay? What do I notice, though? What I notice is that these collagen fibers are thick, okay? Whereas the collagen fibers up here are thin, which means I have more ground substance in the areolar, so it's loose. And I have less ground substance in the dense irregular. The collagen fibers are going in different directions in both, but in dense irregular, they're much thicker, thicker collagen fibers. Both places can resist tension in multiple directions, but this will be much better at resisting tension in multiple directions. So resist tension in multiple directions. Okay. Now you may be wondering, and you're like, oh, look, but you said that this was dense, and this looks like there's a lot of white space. All right, where I'm drawing in yellow isn't actually lots of white space or lots of ground substance. That's actually where you've got elastic fibers packed in, but um, because they only used one type of stain, you can't see the elastic fibers. Elastic fibers don't pick up the same type of stain as the collagen fibers. So you need to use a black stain in addition to the pink stain. And if you use the black stain and something like the dermis, then it basically stains everything black and you can't see the other structures, okay? So they don't put it on there. So this white thing, the stuff that looks like white space actually isn't, it's where you've got collagen fibers. And then I can see, over here I can see them better, but I've got various cells, you can see cells. All right, so how did I draw that green line? I looked at the density of the collagen fibers. So these lines here, I looked at those. And where it was denser versus where it was less dense, that's where I drew that green line to separate the areolar connective tissue proper from the dense irregular connective tissue proper, okay? All right, let's look at one more slide. All right, here we are looking at connective, elastic connective tissue proper. And it is really important to always include the full name. So you could just say elastic CTP. Just put it on there, don't forget it. Because we have elastic cartilage and people mix them up, or they don't say one or the other, and then I don't know if you know the difference between the cartilage and the connective tissue proper, okay? So remember, elastic fibers recoil. So the function of elastic connective tissue proper is recoil. And you're gonna find these, um, let's actually make this a better explanation, around the alveoli of the lungs to help those little bobbles um, reduce in size back to their normal shape after breathing. You've got them in the lamina of the large arteries. Um, there's some up in the ligament of Nuki. Um, try to remember these two, okay? This over here is a picture of, uh, let me change the color, of the elastic lamina in the aorta. And this is one of the better, I have to actually go online and steal this picture from another website because we don't have good pictures of this in the lab. Um, are the alveoli, it's so thin and delicate in the lungs that you can't really see it with the magnification we have in the lab. So in the aorta, if you get a longitudinal section, you can see the elastic fibers because of the staining that they use. There's also collagen fibers in here and then you can see some ground substance and then we've got the cells, so fibroblasts, lymphocytes, whites, you know, whatever, okay? Probably mostly all of those are fibroblasts, and then all of those are the elastic fibers, okay? 
All right, as I promised, this one was shorter than the others, and so I will stop here and you can take a break and then move on to the next one.